Okay, so let's talk a little bit about text inside of After Effects or working with text as an idea. Uh, so cool. We're making a new composition. New composition. We'll go with, uh, again, HD 1080, 24, 1920 by 1080. And I can just make this uh, maybe 10 seconds long. It's more than enough. And we'll make a new composition. So cool. Here's my new composition there. So I have a text tool up here. So we've gone through a bunch of these tools, but we also have a text tool, the horizontal type tool. I can click here. There is a tendency for some people to want to make a text box to drag and click and drag a text box, which you totally can do. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, that has never been helpful to me. Um, so I'm not a big fan of that as an idea. So all you have to do is if you're in text and you're on the text tool, just click and just click and it makes a piece of text. And we're going to call this, uh, we're going to write the words good times. And so we have this text here. This is good times. Um, I'm going to switch back over to the selection tool to get out of good times. And I have it there. One of the things I often do, and this is me just being dumb. I'll admit it. I'm dumb sometimes is if I'm in text, I'll type in words like good times or something. And then I'll want to switch over to the selection tool. So I'll start using the shortcut, like the V key to go to selection tool. So I'll hit V and V and V and I'll be like, damn it. Why is this working? Why is this? And because I'm a dummy and because I can't do that while I'm in the middle of typing words, that doesn't, you know, your shortcut keys don't work anymore. You could also hit the enter key on the number pad and then hit boom. And then you'd be back into text. And then you can go to the selection tool and then do that. And then I have good times. When you make text, it automatically makes a text layer that says the name of the text layer there, the name of the words there. It also opens up two windows, uh, the character window, the character controls, and the paragraph controls. And so here's the character controls and the paragraph controls that we have available. And now that I'm clicking this text, again, if I'm not clicking this text, this doesn't do anything, but if I'm clicked on this text, I can now see my character controls. And so now I have my font. So I do have my font choice. I can choose whatever font I want to. We can go to something simple. We could actually type in here, you know, Helvetica or something and go to Helvetica regular and see Helvetica there and have that as there. Um, they give me Helvetica and they give me all the Helvetica options. So light, light oblique, uh, regular, regular oblique, bold oblique, all this other good stuff, all these different modes of different fonts. So different fonts will come with different qualities there. Um, we're just going to go back to impact. I like impact. We're going to have an impact, which doesn't really offer as many variables. Um, there isn't really a, there's a regular. That's pretty much all they got. Just a regular impact there. Um, so I do have that control. Um, over here, I have the color of the font itself. So here, the fill color. Um, if I double click on this, I can open the fill color and I can see a choice of color. We'll make this say light blue or something. We'll go with a light blue there. Um, and then I also have behind that a stroke color. We haven't talked about stroke yet, but here's the stroke color. I can change my stroke color, double click on that and make that maybe yellow or something. And so now I have light blue over yellow. And that looks awful. Let's go dark blue. Yeah, there we go. Maybe something pink. I don't know. We could scroll through orange. Maybe just white. Let's keep it white. Cool. Anyway, so we have that there controls like so, and we have it there. Be beneath that, we do have, um, there is an eyedropper, so you can use the eyedropper to choose colors. So if, for example, you had some kind of interesting background, um, you know, street corner here, some kind of video here, and you wanted this text to be the color of the awning or something, you choose it to awning color and then have it there. But I wasn't clicked on good times, so I wasn't seeing it. So let's click on good times first, sorry. Click on good times, choose that, and then boom. Now it's red. So things you could do, you could match colors with the eyedropper. There is a text font size. So this is the font size. We can make the font bigger, make it 200. And you have that control there. Remember, you also have a scale control though. So the scale control actually has a scale control that will make this bigger here. So I always question like if this is 200 and this is 100, it's basically saying the same thing as if this, as if this was 100. And this was 200, you know, I mean, it's roughly the same thing. It's just how you think about it. Are we scaling this up or are we setting the font size by default? So this, I guess, would be kind of the default font size. We'll leave this at 200. I like that better. It looks a little bit more bolder um, there. And we can still move this around, put this someplace there like so. Um, we do have uh, some controls for um, the letting, the tracking, and the kerning. Um, the letting, 
um, is the spacing between lines. So if you double click here and put a cursor here, if you have two lines, it has an auto amount of letting, but you could set your letting to uh, 11, or let's click on it first. Whoops, V key. Hold on, let's go to selection tool, not the V key. Um, and we can set this to um, say 12 or something, and that'd be on top of each other. Or you can click and drag and pull this out and decide how big of a space you want. You know, if you want these letters to be right on top of each other like so, or you could just go to auto and let it define its own, what it thinks the good size here is. So you have that control there. Uh, next over here, you have a tracking control. The tracking control is the space in between letters. And so you can open the tracking and have this be kind of a loose tracking there, or these letters tied in each other. Um, Adobe refers to these as tracking. There's a, a clearly a difference between tracking and kerning. Kerning is the spacing between uh, just two letters. So you could do this here with kerning and have the kerning between only two letters. So the individual kerning versus the overall tracking. There's a difference there in terms of how these things equal different values. So uh, these two controls for kerning and tracking, but you do have to have the cursor there up in order to really appreciate the kerning as an idea. So you have a cursor here between two letters. You can then do kerning. Anyway, uh, so you have those controls there. Um, we did have a we did have a stroke around here. So there is a stroke here, and you see the stroke is the white stroke here. Um, it's set to eight right now. You can make this bigger and make a bigger set of stroke. Let me go back to the selection tool. So we highlight this text. We have this text chosen, and now we can go here to stroke, make the stroke bigger, make the stroke smaller, whatever it may be. You could change the relationship where the stroke is over the fill or whether the stroke is underneath the fill. So whether it's hidden behind there, um, all those controls, et cetera. You do have controls for to change the uh, vertical scale, so make these letters taller. And the horizontal scale, make these letters fatter. So you can control those things there. And then there's controls for uh, the baseline shift, which would put certain letters above. So if you want to change some random letter to have a higher baseline shift, you could highlight this one letter and then update it so it was like above slightly there, you know, a little accent letter. Um, and then something called the zoom, which I'm still trying to understand what the zoom does. It's a relationship there of how the letters are next to each other. They do come with a, a, a fake bold. So this is what's called a faux bold um, and makes these letters bigger or smaller. Let me grab all the letters and actually put an actual bold in all the letters so we can make them all bold or all italics, which would slant them. And you might ask yourself, what's the difference between fake bold and real bold? Why is it fake and not real? Um, well, th it's it's tricky. Um, when they make when they make typography and when when people make letters and make make characters, um, they actually draw a separate shape for what italics are. So italics aren't just the letters slanted. They're, sometimes they are, but a lot of times they're slanted with some kind of at least a little different style to them of how they slant. Um, depending on the letter. And so this is just like turning them all. This is fake. And so you have those kind of controls, et cetera, and some other controls there. So there's basic character controls. You can mess with them and you can make some perfectly fine, good text as it were. I'm going to kill the stroke control and get rid of the stroke and just leave the text there. We're just going to make some new text because I'm getting a little bit crazy here. Um, and we're just going to go here back to the T and we're going to say, um, I don't know, we'll make this say fun times. Fun times. Cool. And you see it's retained uh, what I was doing last time. So let's go back to the uh, zero based uh, there, fun times. And now I have no stroke, I just have the letters. I'll just make the letters white just for now. So cool, it says fun times there like so. And I'm gonna show you something that, that, I, that I had never known before. Actually, we'll change this back to 100% and 100%, and that feels better. Um, and cool, I'll show you something I, I never knew before, and it took me like years, years, literally years of working in After Effects before I found out like this was here. Um, if you right click on a layer, and if you right click on a layer, you can go to uh, layer and go to layer styles. And under layer styles, you have things like drop shadow, which means you can add in a layer style of drop shadow. So if you've heard of Photoshop's layer styles before, you might have seen them, but they're kind of hidden. So they're under the layer menu, under layer uh, layer styles, where are your layer styles, drop shadow, they're there, but you can also right click and get to layer 
layer styles drop shadow. And now you see there's a little bit of drop shadow on my text. And now if I open up the drop shadow, you see there's this new section here that says layer styles. And under layer styles, there's this new section here that says drop shadow. And under drop shadow, you have the color of the drop shadow and the opacity of the drop shadow and the distance of the drop shadow. We'll make this a little bit bigger distance. Yeah, a little distance. Change the opacity a little bit stronger. Uh, and change the color to, I don't know, a shade of red, maybe something hideous. And so now it's red. It's using multiply to kind of superimpose the shadow into the into the background. Um, you can change the blending mode of the shadows to lighten or something like there or whatever it may be. I kind of like multiply for now. So we'll keep this like there. And now I have this red drop shadow here, like so. You can change the angle by rotating the angle around the drop shadow. Cool. And so you have that control. There's a control for the size, which kind of separates us out or makes us kind of softer. Um, you have that control there. Some noise. You could add noise to your drop shadow if you wanted to. A little bit of grungy noise. I guess you could size this in softness and have a little grungy noise spread out. Weird. Interesting idea. There. And so you have a little bit of, of, of that control there. That's pretty hideous. We'll keep this pretty hideous. But layer styles, again, uh, layer styles, inner shadow. That would be a shadow inside the words. And there's a little shadow inside of the text here. And the inner shadow has controls as well. So you can change the, the distance of the inner shadow, the size of the inner shadow, the opacity, make it stronger, add some noise to that as well. You know, whatever you want to do, you can make this as hideous as you want to. Or you could go here and say, uh, close drop shadow, close inner shadow. Right here, you can go to layer styles, um, show all, and this would add all the drop things. Now that's gonna reset the drop shadow and the inner shadow that were there already. But now we can just redo this. We can make this a uh, dark red again here and have this be distance here with a whole bunch of noise. Inner shadow will make, I don't know, light blue maybe? There we go, light blue. A little bit more distance, a little bit, little bit of noise. Yeah, this is getting ugly. This is getting really ugly. And then there's eye pieces here that you can add each of these lights, uh, each of these layer styles on here. So here's an outer glow. This puts a glow around the words. We'll make that outer glow really, really big. Let's see the size of the outer glow will be, there we go. It's yellow, that's hideous. Like it basically covered over the drop shadow. Uh, we'll add in inner glow. This is an inner glow in addition to the inner shadow. We have an inner glow. Can't even see that. Let's see if we make that a little bit bigger size. Let's change the color to something more drastic. We'll change it to green. We'll make that most hideous text ever. I still can't even see the inner glow. Let's change it to like uh, normal mode. Oh, there we go. That's too big now. Add some jitter. So it pulsates, craziness. A bevel and emboss. Oh yeah, a bevel and emboss. Let's bevel these letters. Let's see in the settings of bevel, we have a pillow emboss. Sounds good. Uh, smooth or do you want to chisel hard? Yeah, let's chisel this hard. Yeah, there we go. Um, the size will make it a little bigger. There we go. Let's change this to an inner bevel. Yeah, that feels good. Look at that. Oh, that's hideous. Ooh different shadow modes and blending modes, how it shadows in here, the angle. Yeah, that's weird. Cool. Excellent. Uh, a satin overlay. So in addition to bevel overlay, you can also do a satin overlay, which would, if you turn the bevel off for a second, you can see the satin overlay. It adds a little bit of a texture pattern into here. So now we have this little satin overlay. It's a little, little like 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 fabric folds. Change the size of that. The angle. Kind of like the angle the way it is. Uh, the color, we can make this, I don't know, red maybe? Yeah. Oh, oh, this is hideous. This is ugly. We'll bring, bring the bevel back. Yeah. Yeah, that's ugly. Uh, then, you have a, then you have a color overlay, which would change the color of this to a different color. Kind of ruins the whole satin thing. So let's leave that alone. A gradient overlay, which would add a gradient here. And then you can go to gradient overlay and then change the colors, edit gradients. And then here under colors, edit gradients, you could add different colors. So we can make this say yellow 
over orange, these little knots, these little steps here, um, yellow or orange, that looks hideous. Cool. We could add some more in here at a, at a, at a, at a blue and a pink. And I'm just clicking in a green. And now we have all these. Oh, that's pretty fantastic. Light blue. Okay, so now we have some hideous, hideous text. Um, this is pretty awful. And then lastly, you can, and again, you can change the scale of this, change the style. So you have a radial. So it kind of radiates out from the center. Change the, uh, let's see, change the scale of the radius. So it kind of opens up more. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, let's see the gradient smoothness, the offset. Can you move this offset? Yeah, you can move this here. Oh, that's weird. Cool. Uh, and then lastly, a stroke control. And so now we also have a stroke control of going to a stroke and saying, yeah, okay, so now let's add a stroke in here. We'll change the stroke to, ah, red's good. Change the size of the stroke. And change the opacity of the stroke and position this on the outside, the center, or let's put in the center. Cool. And so we have the stroke. So now we have this hideous, hideous looking graphic. I mean, this is pretty, pretty hideous. I feel like we want to go maybe diamond. No, let's go. Let's go linear. Yeah. Okay. So this is really hideous. This is a hideous graphic. Why would you want to do this? Well, you wouldn't want to do this. And I, and I wouldn't want to do this either. Um, this is a pretty disgustingly awful graphic. And there's a graph designer who's like cringing right now. Like, yeah, this is hideous. But here's the thing. If you didn't know that these existed, if you were unaware, you get this. And this is all you get. This is the flat text you get. So, you know, maybe not all of these, but, you know, maybe a drop shadow here or there you know, wouldn't be a bad thing, you know, just a drop shadow, a little bit of drop shadow. And again, not a drop shadow with all these controls, you know, maybe a drop shadow with no noise and, you know, something simple. Again, do we need the stroke to be that big? No, maybe the stroke like two or something. Then we have a little bit of drop shadow, a little bit of red there in the distance, whatever it may be, you know, just a, just a, just a tiny bit. Here's my drop shadow. Again, if you want text that pops or something like that, you may want to play with some of these layer styles. If you didn't know that they're there, congratulations. I've just told you they're there. You have some layer styles that you can manipulate and you can play with. Um, so I will use this. And here's the thing. All of these, if you look, I'm going to hit the tilt key or the accent grave. Um, if you look, all of these controls, they're all keyframable. Every last one of these, you can keyframe everything here. And so all these controls all have keyframes, all have keyframe controls that you can manipulate and do all this keyframe with. I mean, look at all these things that can be keyframed. We're not just talking about, you know, position, anchor point, scale, rotation, opacity anymore. All these things, all these things can be keyframed. Um, so you got a lot of keyframe ability that you can use to do all that. Um, but, you know, that's some stuff we have. I'm going to get rid of layer styles for a second. We're just going to delete that. We're going to add the default, um, the default, uh, stroke here we'll just add like a like a five pixel stroke nothing special cool just simple simple text here and we'll have this here as an idea um okay so things we can do if you look at the text there's also in addition to the transform controls there are also now text controls and text controls include ways of manipulating the text or controlling the text doing stuff with the text and so under text controls you'll see an option here for something called source text what the heck is source text well let me look at this in a certain way. I'm going to actually uh, switch over here. I'm going to take fun times and I'm going to change the, the, the alignment here, the paragraph justification here. Um, you can have this be left aligned. So it's on the left edge or center aligned or right aligned. And this would be a case as if you had multiple layers of text. So if you had multiple layers of text like this, you could have this be centered. Again, we'll go here. We'll have this be left centered or right aligned. Well, in this case, I want to have it be right aligned. And I want to do this for a specific reason because I've done this before and it works. Um, so again, we'll be here with fun times here, uh, like so. And I'm going to have fun times here. The source text over here, there's a control here that says source text. And source text, um, there's no controls here. It's not like transform controls where there's like things you can drag and move and adjust to adjust the opacity, whatever it may be. There's nothing here. It's just source text. And you're like, what the heck does this do? But here's the thing. There's a stopwatch. And you're like, wow, that's weird. There's a stopwatch. What does the stopwatch let you do? Well, we're going to go here and we're going to hit the stopwatch. And when we hit the stopwatch, it makes a keyframe. 
And you'll be amazed because the keyframe is a square. And you're like, that's weird. I've never seen a square keyframe before. What is a square keyframe, Chad? And here's what a square keyframe is. A square keyframe is what's called a hold keyframe. And this is called a hold keyframe because source text by default uses hold keyframes. This is designed to use hold keyframes. This is relatively simple and relatively straightforward. So if you think about a keyframe, a normal keyframe, we're gonna turn the stopwatch off for a second. If you put position here and I go over to here and I move over to two seconds and I move over to here, it puts a diamond keyframe and these diamond keyframes say, hey, move from here to here. And that's what the, that's what it does. I mean, that's that's how it works. It moves from there to there, and that's how the keyframe moves. It starts at one place, and then it does the math to go from this place to this place. So it was at what is this? Eight ninety two by eight twenty nine, and it goes to eighteen sixteen by eighteen twenty nine. So you do the math. It does the math and transitions from there to there, and that's called a regular progressive keyframe. If I I think if I alt click on this, is it alt click? Command alt click, command alt click on this. I can switch this keyframe to what's called a hold keyframe. What that means is, is it's gonna stay this way until it gets to this keyframe and then it's gonna switch over to here. So it doesn't progress. It stays and then jumps. And so it stays there until that exact keyframe. You could have done the same thing by having it be over here up into one frame before and then jumping. Would have done the same thing. But this is just says, hey, do this, stay here until you get to this next keyframe and jump to there. And that's what's called a hold keyframe. And that's how traditionally keyframes will work inside of here. And so that's kind of the keyframe mentality, if you will. That's how keyframes are basically designed. Okay, so that said, in source text, what we can do is we can go to source text. It makes a hold keyframe and says, hey, this is what the text is at this point. If we go to two seconds and we change this to say, I don't know, we right click and call this, um, we'll delete this and say bad times. What it's going to do is it's going to say fun times here until it gets to the next point. Bad times. Then we go to here. We'll delete this and say hard times. Then we'll go to six seconds. And we'll say, I don't know, work times. And now the text is changing at each of those random intervals. So it's fun times, bad times, hard times, work times. And then, so we have this changeable text that changes at these random intervals here and goes to there. And so we have that as changeable text. Is it amazing? No. Does the letters evolve into something new? No, not really. It's just there to just kind of set up and do it. Yeah, it's nothing. I mean, it's nothing amazing. It's nothing fantastic. Um, we can do this this way. We can do, we'll take this text, we'll highlight it all. We'll say, um, uh, work hard. I'm going to move this to, uh, sorry, wait, enter. And let's just do make this left justified. Work hard. We'll go here and we'll say work hard. And then I'll go to one second. Oh, no, we want to be, we want to be the other justification. Sorry. We're going to be here. We're going to choose work hard. We'll do it this way. Work hard, source text. Again, we'll grab this and have this say play hard. And this will say two seconds, this will say maybe like dance hard. Uh, fight hard. I don't know. Eat hard, I guess, I don't know. We'll go quicker now, we'll get quicker. Swim, swim hard. Um, let's see, uh, let's delete that and say, I don't know, kick hard, I guess. Oops, let's leave it in all caps. 
Um, and then we'll do this one, and this will be quicker. Then we'll say uh, live hard. Oops. And then lastly, we'll end here at this. And this one will obviously say die hard. And this is like every movie trailer you've ever seen in your life. It's like work hard. Cool sound effect like. And then some explodes and then this guy, this whole car blows up or something. Maybe this is moving. Maybe the whole, maybe the whole text is like animating bigger, like has a little scale animation here. So it's doing like a, it's like in the distance. And then it comes up and gets much bigger. And then it explodes. So we kind of boom, boom. And again, this is not this is not groundbreaking, right? This is not overwhelmingly brilliant or amazing or powerful. It's just, hey, the text changes. Traditionally, you'd have to make this with like 11 pieces of text. And so you'd have 11 pieces of text where one would begin and the next one would end and the next one would begin, the next one would end. We can do this all in one layer now. And that's, we have the ability to do this all in one layer. Does it progress? Did the layers change from one layer to another layer or one letter to another letter? No, it doesn't do it as much. It's not, it's not as all powerful as that, but it's something. It's something that makes your life easier. That is the source text control. That is relatively simple. That is the source text control. So that's there. Cool. All right. So we'll delete this text and we're going to delete this and we're going to start over. I'll, I'll get a new text and we'll just click a new text and we'll call this one uh, roller coaster. Uh, roller coaster. And I'm going to put roller coaster here on the screen and we're going to put this uh, maybe just center justified. Cool. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because it's a big word. We'll going to make this like 125. Cool. Roller coaster. Excellent. We'll choose a different font maybe. Maybe. Okay, Lhasa? Sure. Oh, no, I thought I clicked on it. Weird. You can also just cycle through. Let's see. K is okay. It's kind of boring. Kefa. Oh, I like uh I like Kushan script. Yeah, that's cool. That's fun. All right, so Kushan script. So now we here we have this and underneath source text, if you go to text controls, on text controls, you see that we have source text. And under source text, it says path options. And under path options, you open a path options. This is, hey, path options. What about path options? Would you like to take advantage of some path options, Chad? Sure. And under path options, it's like none. Oh, oh, that's a shame. None. Keep pulling it. None. Well, that was a big waste. What do you mean none? There's no path options? I want path options. Well, you need a path, silly. Well, what the heck's a path? Oh, well, here's what you need. You need a mask path. When it asks about a path, it's asking about a mask path. Just like the stroke effect, when it's asked about a path, you're going to choose the pen tool. And we're going to go here like this. And we're going to say, let's click here and click here and click there and click there and click there and click there. And we will make a path here. And now we have this mask. So now here under masks, we have mask number one. This is my mask. And if I go to path options, I can say path options. It says, oh, now there's a path. You gave me a path. Now here's my path options. I choose mask one. And then a mask one, it says, boom. And then it puts roller coaster on this path. And it puts this kind of against this path. Let's take this whole text. Sorry, this text is up in sub here. Let's move this back to zero. Cool. And now we have this here. Um, roller coasters on here. And now we have path options. So now once we have a path, it gives us path options. And now we have this. So the first question is, is it on the path or is it reverse path? And we can switch this to on. Now it'd be upside down. So now it says roller coaster here, upside down on the path. And so we have it there. Next is perpendicular to path, which means it curves around the path. And so it curves here around the path. Um, if we turn that off, all the letters are upright the way they're supposed to be facing. It still follows the path, but the letters don't bend with the path. So we can turn that back on, have it follow around the path. And then force alignment says, hey, spread this out across the whole path. So adjust the tracking or the kerning so that this is all spread out across the path. Now it looks like this. It's falling completely off the path as it were. Let's turn that off for a second. And then there's the controls for first margin and last margin. And when your center paragraph aligned, um, these don't really matter which one you use. Um, what it does, it just moves the margin. And so by moving the margin, we can move this across the path. 
So we can take this and move this first margin across the path. And if you're, again, if you're centered aligned, you can use either the first margin or last margin. It doesn't really matter. If you are left aligned, I think only the first margin works. And the right one doesn't do much for you. Yeah, and if you are right aligned, the second margin works and the right one doesn't do anything for you or the first margin doesn't do anything for you. So it just depends on what you are. But if you are center aligned, you do have the ability to use both. And you have those controls there. And they are animatable. So you could do like an animation where you said, hey, roller coaster off screen here. Have it come on screen. One, na, 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 na. And then roller coaster. And then maybe stop there. We'll copy this keyframe command C, go to here, command V, and then it again further goes off screen. It's now a little animated text that comes in. Roller coaster. Off screen. So cool. You can have that kind of come on screen. Do like that. Cool enough. Cool enough. Is it something you're gonna want to do? Maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe when you first start playing, you get some cool things. But occasionally, you, you need something like this. You need something relatively simple like this. And I'll show you two good reasons why you may want to use something like this. Um, you may say, for example, if you had a text, and we'll start over. We'll grab a text here, and we'll have a text that says, um, uh, I don't know, like, discount. And we'll have this text here like so. We'll use a boring font. We'll hit Enter. We'll use a boring font, uh, maybe just impact. Yeah. And so like a lot of times what I'll end up doing is I have a text here and I want to put this text on this wall right here. I want to put it on the wall right here. I want to put it like against this wall right here. And I could, you know, I could go to my rotation tool and try to rotate this to be here and fit in a certain way in there. It sometimes it's just easier to designate a area of like being like, no, I want my my i wanted to be right from here to here i wanted to be like there and i wanted to be like there from there and so now i can just go source text text path options and put it right there and put you know like if i want something to be some some certain place or if i'm if i'm illustrating something on a map and i'm saying you know um i have this map of the us and i say you know i want to designate um where the you know where the where the US Canada border is. And so I type in, you know, Canadian, I guess capital C. Canadian border. You know, maybe I make this text a little bit smaller. Like 80. I can just go here and just take the pen tool. And if I know how to use the pen tool, I can just drag out and drag, drag in Canadian border, you know, whatever. And then just say, cool, let's go here, text, path options, mask one, and now it's just boom, Canadian border. So it's like, it's perfectly right there, exactly where I need to be. And I can just kind of draw out those kind of places or locations of something that need to be someplace you know, where it may be if I'm doing a graph like that. It's really convenient and I can animate it if I wanted to. I could move this first margin back and forth and be like Canadian border up here. And I could have this little bit of playfulness. Well, I don't know, something to do like there and like so. The other thing I've done before is if I'm doing something, we'll go back to this here. Uh, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll make like a, we'll make a thing that says like, all you can eat and we'll have it there and so now i'm going to selection tool and i'll say let's take a circular mask because you can make circular masks ellipse masks and we'll make a circular mask and we'll have this be all you can eat now this is going to mask out this is going to cover up all you can eat because it's going to mask this out because the mask you can mask text and that works as an idea it's a thing you can do you could mask text but if i go here and i say switch the mask mode to none now it's not mask the text but then i can still use it path options in here with this mask. And now I can say all you need, and now I can have it here. Or maybe I go to reverse path and have it on the outside. And then maybe I just animate my first margin here to say, yeah, let's do this. Well, it's only five seconds, good enough for us. And then we have a little, you know, all you can eat. 
little sign that, you know, moves around in the corner. You know, now it's just all you can eat. Little, little there. We'll take this. We'll make it a little bit smaller. Move this in the corner. Let me move it up here. I don't know. Up here? I don't know. Someplace. If we want it up here, we probably want to put a bigger edge on it. Maybe. Maybe we need to bevel it. Who knows? Maybe we need to bevel. All you can eat. Or you can do this like if you did like a New York City aerial. And you had New York City aerial here. Um, and you had like some kind of heads up display of, you know, remaining health or warning. Uh, warning. Cool. Uh, cool. And you had that set up right there, and we said, cool. And again, we could take the circle, the ellipse, put a little ellipse here. Again, switch this to none. And then here with the text, we could say path options, put this on the mask. Again, reverse the path, maybe scale it down a little bit. But then the text, maybe I'm warning, maybe like system. System, it's hard to type this way, critical, there we go. And again, we'll just go into the text and go to the path options and just animate this. First margin, should we go this way? Maybe, wait, let's see, this way? Or should we go the way we read? Maybe the other way. There, whole bunch of that. System critical. A little warning. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll blending mode this. Shift plus. Let's see if we can blending mode this to something. Eh, maybe just opacity. It's only black and white, so it's not really giving us everything we want. Oh, the opacity. Just have a little display there in the corner, maybe in this corner that just plays back system critical, you know, and you can decide how fast you want this to be or whatever you want it to do, however you want it to go. But it's an idea. Is it amazing? No, but it's just, you know, some things we can do with text, some controls we have with text, some warnings. We can play with some other ideas there. All right, so that's all I'm going to do for this. Uh, later on, I want to get into text animators, and I do want to have some fun with some text animators. We're going to play with some ideas called text animators. That's in this function inside here. Um, up in here into animate, we can create, create in, uh, per character 3D animation or other kind of animation in what's called a text animator. Um, I do want to explore that, but that's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I do want to take a little bit more time and not overwhelm this lesson with that. So the next lesson... I promise we'll be in text animators and we'll have some fun doing some of that stuff. So check that out. In the meantime, you know, have some text. You can even right click on, or you can even click on this and hold and go to vertical type text. It's always weird. So weird to type vertically. Yeah, that's, that's bizarre. That's weird. Careful of that guy. Anyway, huh? We'll come back. We'll do some other stuff um, and we'll, you know, play, make some, make some cool stuff. All right.